Good morning, China. I'm Lauren Shannon. And I'm Emily Ayubi, and this is CBC reporting live as refugees under Japanese control on this summer day of 1940. As we all know, in these past few years, conditions have worsened due to the Japanese occupation in our country. All of our raw materials, such as oil, rubber, and lumber, have been taken from us and used towards Japan's war effort because of the embargo placed by America on the Pacific. Adding on to the horrors, we are the first nation to experience brutal warfare among our homelands, such as the aerial bombings placed upon us by the Japanese on our beloved city of Shanghai. As you all may know, our nation has been troubled by breaking news. We have just received an update of the horrible conditions in the city of Nanjing. As we know, in 1937, the Japanese captured the city of Nanjing along with the civilians that resided in it. They all unwillingly became victims of Japanese troops that were fueled by their passion of war and a sense of racial superiority. The people are still today being murdered, ambushed, and abused by the Japanese. Up to 70,000 fatalities have been reported so far. The Japanese government has yet to admit their wrongdoings and violence they have created over these last painful three years. They argue that these rapings and murders are military-based, and they go as far to say that what they are doing is not a crime. Let's hear a word from our leader, Chiang Kai-shek. President Chai Yang Kai-shek is very hardworking and a meticulous leader. Let's hear a few words from our leader. It is very nice to meet you, sir. We have a couple questions with you, beginning with, what are your views on the relationship between the civilians and the government following the rape of Nanjing and the other war impacts? The people of China and the government work closely together in order for freedom to follow the course of national revolution. We aid each other in resistance against our enemies, both the government and the people. We all are at peace with one another. What makes you so confident that the Chinese will be victorious? Under my rule, I have worked to fuel the Chinese nationalism within the Republic and inherited other things for the benefit of China. Today, the morale of our people is excellent. How did you manage to reach such unity among the people and the government? I worked rigorously to implement the New Life Movement, which aimed at the promotion of bringing everyone together and working cooperatively. It became a natural law when applied to nature and became a rule when applied to social affairs, which signifies discipline when used to reference national affairs. And here's an analysis of a Chinese propaganda poster in World War II. The rough English translation on the Chinese words to the left is back to arms, in which it depicts a Chinese soldier saluting to the planes above. The purpose of the propaganda poster is to recruit the Chinese to join the Air Force in order to fend off the Japanese from further invasions. Let us take a look live at the scene. As you can see in the graph, the light blue bar to the left is a depiction of the Chinese population before the start of the rape of Nanjing, along with the invasion of the Japanese. As time proceeds, the population declines at a drastic rate, starting at a million and falling all the way down to 300,000. Over a two-year time span, the population gradually rose to 600,000, but still suffers from the effects of the rape of Nanjing. And here is a live update at the scene. Well, China, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in, but remember that we need all the help we can get in order to fight off our enemies. Tune in next week on CBC to see our Monday night special with our trusted ally, the leader of the United States of America.